The fourth form of organization is cooperative societies. Now what are cooperative society? It is a voluntary association of members who get together with the motive of mutual welfare of the members. Right? Now a minimum of 10 adult members are required to form a cooperative society and it is governed by the provisions of Cooperative Societies Act 1912 and it is required to be compulsorily registered under Cooperative Societies Act 1912. In a layman's language, I will tell you what it is all about, what a cooperative society is all about. Let us say if there are 10 people, right? In Delhi University, this is the best example of forming a cooperative. Huh. What happened was that stationery is required for students, right? Stationery is required, you need to buy registers, you need to buy pens, right? So, there is a BU hai. fine? Now, what is it is the students. Okay, Delhi University students only, this is I am talking about our times. They had formed a cooperative society wherein they would buy the stationery directly from the manufacturers. They would buy the stationery directly from the wholesale market, I would say. Basically, the retailers were eliminated from the chain. Right? They if they buy it directly from the wholesalers and the profit margin what they would keep only of a rupee or two. Right? So as a result, the students of the university, they were able to get the uh, stationery at a price which was much lower than the market price of the register or the market price of a pen. So basically people, ten, more than 10 people, they get together, they pool in their money, they pool in their money and they buy the product directly. They buy the product directly from the manufacturers. Right? They buy, they buy the product directly from the manufacturers. As a result, they are able to acquire the product at a much cheaper price. Right? The main motive of the cooperative societies is social welfare. Right? That is to eliminate any kind of middlemen. To eliminate middlemen. Right? What are the features of cooperative society? First of all, it is a voluntary association. Anyone can become a member of the cooperative society who has attained the age of 18 and is interested to work towards mutual welfare of the members. Right? They can pool in their resources and can become the member of a cooperative society. Secondly, it has a separate legal entity. Children, whenever you, any organization is compulsorily required to be registered under any act, okay, it will have a separate legal entity. Till now, we were talking of partnership, we were talking of sole proprietor and joint Hindu family. I said they were different account, they were separate accounting entity, but legally, that is in the eyes of law, they are one. But if you are registered under any particular act, you become a separate legal entity that is a person separate from business. Right? And if any organization having a separate legal entity, the liability of members of that organization is going to be limited to the extent of the capital contributed by them. If I have put in only 10,000 rupees in an organization, right, which is registered under a special act, right, then in the event of loss, I will only have to lose my 10,000 rupees. That's it. My personal assets will never be involved in paying off the business liabilities in case the organization is registered. So, separate legal entity, limited liability, right? Then comes control. There is a democratic control in the organization. There is a cooperative society, there is a democratic control in the organization wherein every single member will have one vote. Right? Every member will have one vote irrespective of the amount of the capital that you have contributed in the society. Whether you have contributed 10,000 rupees or you have contributed 10 crore rupees, each member is going to have one vote. So the principle of one man, one vote is applicable in case of cooperative societies. Generally, it is asked in the question paper also, name the principle which is applicable in case of cooperative societies. So it is one man, one vote. Then the main motive of cooperative society is to serve, is to serve the society at large and the members of the cooperative and the members of the cooperative society so that you are able to provide them with the goods and services at the lowest possible cost by eliminating the middlemen. Next is distribution of surplus. If at all Otherwise, the main motive though is to serve the society. But if at all there is a kind of surplus which is left over, that is to be distributed amongst the members in form of dividend or 
bonus can also be given. Now coming to merits, ease of formation. It is very easy to form. A minimum of 10 adult members are required to form a cooperative society and it is to be registered under law. Uh, it is to be registered under Cooperative Societies Act 1912. There is democratic management as I told you under this point. Right? There is a democratic management. All the issues right, are uh, decided upon in a very democratic manner uh, in a very democratic manner wherein every member is given a chance to vote. Every member casts his vote and then finally the decision is arrived at. Every member has a single vote. One man, one vote irrespective of the amount of capital that has been contributed by the members. Limited liability, this acts as an advantage, I told you, because cooperative societies are registered under Cooperative Societies Act 1912. Therefore, the liability of the member stands limited to the amount of capital contributed by them. Right? They will only have to lose the amount of money that they have invested in the society. Nothing more than that. Then there is continuous existence. Hamesha yaad rakhye, teen points hamesha related hoonge. If a society, if an organization is compulsorily required to be registered under law, right? It will have a separate legal entity. The members will have a limited liability and it will enjoy a continued existence. That means the death, lunacy or bankruptcy of the members of that organization will not affect, it, affect its continuity. Will never affect its continuity because members are different from the organization. Sare member will merge tab bhi organization zinda rahegi because organization is separate and members are separate. Because it is, it has a separate legal entity. Then economical functioning. Why economical functioning? Because they don't hire any kind of experts to head different departments, right? Usually the members of the cooperative society, they only offer honorary services, right? Someone will uh, take up the finance department, someone will take up the marketing department, right? So it turns out to be quite an economic affair. Then because their main motive is a service motive that is to serve the society at large, right? So they enjoy a lot of privileges from the government sides that is they get subsidies, they get tax holidays wherein they don't have to pay any kind of tax on the income etc. Now last coming to the demerits, limited financial resources because a minimum of 10 members are required. Generally what happens is that you know, uh, members, uh, it is not necessary that once a person has become a member of the cooperative society, he is going to be there forever. He may choose to withdraw. Why? Because he may find other lucrative uh, opportunities wherein he can invest his money and find a, get a better rate of return. Because here the rate of dividend, the amount of dividend that a person gets is pretty low. And secondly, whether you have uh, shares worth 1 crore or whether you have shares worth rupees 10,000, you will still have only one vote. So that does not act as a good incentive for people to come and invest in cooperative societies. So therefore limited financial resources. Secondly, inefficient management. Because of limited financial resources, they are not in a position to employ your specialists or your uh, experts right in different areas like finance or human resource it is the members who offer honorary services right they may not they may be good at it but they may not be that they may not that they may that may not be their area of specialization lack of secrecy now because the cooperative societies act it requires the cooperative societies to publish its accounts and its affairs are openly discussed in the general body meeting so there is uh, it is not possible for a cooperative society to keep it affair keep its affair secret last is difference of opinion and conflicts when there are more than one person the differences in opinion and conflicts are bound to be there. There could be a situation if there are 10 members, 5 people are voting for the situation and 5 are voting against the situation. In that case, how are we going to arrive at a decision? It becomes, it, you, it does put one in these kind of difficult situations.